Welcome to Juco Full Windup, brought to you by Home Loan Insurance. I'm Kyle Stanley, here with Phil Stafford. And Phil, we've got one more team going home today. But before we get to that game, we're going to go to the nightcap, a battle of undefeated teams. A lot of times, this is a sneak preview to the championship game. Spartanburg Methodist and Central Alabama, two very good teams at the plate. But we've actually seen a little bit of a difference. Central Alabama likes to play the small ball, whereas we've seen a lot of long balls from Spartanburg Absolutely. Methodist. Great matchup of those two tonight. We'll get right into the highlights. Only two teams sat in the driver's seat entering today's action. Spartanburg Methodist and Central Alabama combining for a 5-0 record through the World Series thus far. Both teams honoring the players and coaches of the Challenger baseball program before the start of tonight's contest. The Pioneers had a special pregame speech of their own with one of their biggest fans too. And if there's a name for a sure hit, it's Shell McCain from SMC. McCain drives this one to left center and he'll grab two more RBI. The Pioneers go on top by a run in the bottom of the first. That's where we stayed until the top of the sixth. Chase Henry still on the mound. Blaine Miller gets just enough to push one into right. Alex Lee ties it up. Bo Edwards hustling in as the Trojans regain the lead. Top seven now. The Trojans tacking on. Bo Edwards, he bounces one over the head of the second baseman. That brings in another one for Alabama to make it 6-2. to two. The Pioneers start to rally, though, in the home half of the inning. Gabe D subcorks a wild one. That goes to the backstop. Elliott Caldwell trots home to make this a one-run game. That's when it started to get real interesting. Two away in the eighth. Paul Young slaps one to right. Reed Moman fields it cleanly, and Zach Reinhardt gunning for home. Safe is the call. Bang, bang play for the umpire. Take another look. Tim Wallace hoping it would have gone the other way, but it's a 7-5 advantage for Alabama. Later in the inning, Pioneers threatening with the bases loaded. The Trojans go for the pick at first. Another bang-bang play, and it's Moman called out. That ends the threat, and the Trojans stand alone with no losses in the series. After the game, Miller talks about that risky throw down to first. That was just a call between me and the first baseman, Alex Lee. Uh, we've been pretty good throughout the year about calling our own stuff when it comes to doing that. But uh, it was a team win. We had 18 hits. I didn't get all 18 hits, so you know it was it was the whole team contributed in this win. So the Trojans now move ahead in the winner's bracket. They already play again tomorrow. This will be the very first time that they've played back-to-back -back days in this tournament. Interesting to see how they'll actually respond to that. And speaking of back-to-back -back games, back-to-back -back days, you know, we see Neosho having to come back and play after they lost last night to Spartanburg Methodist. Always a really tough game to have yes. to come back, turn around, and play that first game of the day. But before we get to that game, always need to check in with Coach Murray. <laughs> The ultimate selfie. They're all laughing at us. Laughing at you? Yeah. I, I, think, I think this makes you look better. Entertaining TV. <laughs> Whoa. And there goes that one. I just want to prove when you guys screw up, I got it on film now. Gentlemen, here's the deal. You are still here. Lots of teams are not. You need to play every single out, every pitch, all the way through. Let's see how many teams we can knock out. See if all of a sudden you're showing up here on Saturday for a national title. All right, put it all on the field. Don't leave anything. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, show! Coach Murray loose before the game and so were his Panthers, but the last thing they wanted was a repeat performance from game three last season against Iowa Western. But unfortunately, that's the way this one turned against Cochise. First inning, the Panthers started off on the wrong foot. After a leadoff walk, Jake Johnson gets the ground ball off the bat of Frank Salas, but Jake O'Brien airmails it to second, goes into left, and in comes Nate Hale for the game's first run. And Johnson was rattled from there, walks Jake Luna with the bases loaded, and Coach Murray says that's enough. In comes Jerry Manzer, but his luck wasn't much better. Gives up a two-run single to tag Deuce, and already it's 7-0 Apaches. Second inning, Jake Luna keeps the merry-go-round moving, takes that one up and out to left for a two-run job, and Cochise is running away with this one. It's 9-0. 
Meanwhile, Jacob Potts was throwing a gem, gave up just four hits in five innings of work and only needed 64 pitches to do so. But he did give up one run and it was off the bat of Matt Milner. Solo shot to right gives Neosho a little bit of life, but it was far too late to come back in this one. Cochise eliminates Neosho County 16 to one. The Panthers are headed home while Cochise moves on. We caught up with both teams after the conclusion of this game. Coming in, it's they say it's a once in a lifetime deal, and uh, to get to come here twice, I, you know, I feel really blessed to be on two great teams, back to back years. That it just doesn't happen, and uh, I was lucky to be a part of it. What's one message that you have for your teammates, uh, especially the freshmen that have the hopes of returning here next year? Um, like Coach said, you know the work we put in in the fall. I feel like we work. You know, we work harder than anybody in our area, and um, that really showed, you know, coming here two years in a row, that they know they need, they need to know that that work they're putting in, this is what it's for. And uh, they got a taste of it, and uh, I think it'll keep them hungry for next year. All right, and your plans for four-year university after this? Uh, I signed with Missouri Southern in Joplin, Missouri. All right, best of luck, man. We, uh, we enjoyed you being here. Coach Murray, here to my right now. Uh, Coach, you know, you continually said to us uh, on and off the record, this is one of the greatest group of guys that you've been able to coach. Uh, luckily, you have the opportunity to get a lot of them back next year, but some of the sophomores leaving, kind of talk about uh, the message you want to leave with them. Well, you know, I think they learned a lot of lessons over those two years, and they worked their butts off. And, you know, you got Robbie and Matt and Chance, kind of stand out more than anybody else because they did the most playing time they're all going to be successful they're all good kids they learned what work ethic is and you know they put it to use and they got two chances to do what most kids never get a chance to do and uh, you know we're blessed to have had them possibly three chances if you can get back next year do you think that's uh, in in the uh, playbook for you guys well it's definitely the, the plan you know we feel like we got a a great recruiting class coming off last year's World Series team and and you know we made it with this year's freshmen with just a spackling of sophomores so it's definitely in the plans and and let's hope it comes out like we drew it up coach it's been an honor thanks so much thank you very much let's check in with coach East. Here with the winning pitcher, Jacob Potts, for Coach Cheese. Uh, yesterday, Coach Todd Inglar said you guys like to make uh, the longest season possible. You've played every game necessary. So I guess you guys uh, feel pretty comfortable in the elimination bracket, huh? Yeah, um, you know, we've, we've had to go through a lot of tough situations this year. So uh, when we get down, we feel like we have the confidence to come back. And when we're ahead, we feel like we have the confidence to step on somebody's throat. So, so you guys have been feeling pretty good so far. Uh, what's the feeling going forward? How's the team saying they're going to be doing from here on out? Oh, we're trying to win the championship of course trying to be the number one team in the nation so that's uh it's always our goal and that's what we look forward to doing well we've been spoiled all tournament long with some fantastic plays in the outfield tonight was no different play of the day made by Bo Edwards with this outstanding catch I'll give him some bonus points with the slide and keeping his eye on the ball with his teammate bearing down on it and your home run of the day comes from Jake Luna of the Cochise Apaches Puts the nail in the coffin against Neosho County with the two-run jack to left. Made it 9-0 and Cochise eventually went on to win this one 16-1. Thursday of Juco week, always very interesting because it gives us the map for the rest of the tournament. Can get very confusing or very simple depending on what the outcome is between Central Alabama and Palm Beach State. That's tomorrow night's game, a rematch of our first game of the series. And then two teams battling for their life, Spartanburg Methodist and Cochise at 3 o'clock will kick off the day. We're down to game number 16 starting tomorrow. It's getting exciting. We're excited here over at Saplesio Field. But as for us, I'm Kyle Stanley here with Phil Stafford. That's going to do it for Juco Full Windup. We'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs>